Welcome back. Let's catch you up on a few stories that should be on your radar today. It's time for Rapid Fire. Here to break down the headlines are Robert Frank, Morgan Brennan, and Dom Chu. Welcome, everybody. And, well, it just you can feel the anticipation for the Fed meeting, but we got a lot of nuggets here that are relevant, so stay with us. Mondelez raising its sales forecast for the year after seeing rising demand for Oreos and Cadbury. They also pointed to growth in China, India, Southeast Asia, Russia, and Mexico as growth drivers. Actually, in the largest market, which is Europe, the company is stockpiling goods to prepare for a potential Brexit. The shares have reversed lower, um, but they're up like 30-some percent this year. Consumer staples companies in general have had a nice string of these reports where yeah. many of them have reported organic sales growth. This idea that you can grow your business without acquisitions, you can grow your business in sales without the effects of FX or currency kind of headwinds or tailwinds, that sort of thing. With Mondelez, what's great about that story is they are placing bets in the right parts in emerging markets, and they're actually getting it right with regard to product mix. So hard so that's to a, do. Which is tough in a consumer <laughs> product, no matter where you are, the U.S., Asia, developed versus emerging markets, Mondelez is doing it right. What I want to see is whether or not it carries that Procter & Gamble story into Mondelez, into Clorox, into these other consumer products names. And by the way, they have pricing power. Wow. They've been able Bingo. to raise prices and consumers have paid them, which is another reason why those organic sales are growing. It's huge. The and you are. think about how high the expectations were with the stock up that much this year. I mean, it's almost looking frothy for consumer staples. But yet then they put up earnings reports like this this week. Yeah. And there have been arguments out there that the valuations of these stocks have been maybe looking, you know, a little expensive as of late. And I think ex exactly what Dom just said, Mondelez, P&G, Hershey, Nestle, Unilever, Kimberly Clark, organic sales are growing and they have pricing power despite the fact that we've seen slower global economic growth and we have seen the issues with tariffs and trade. They've been able to price higher and the markets have been able to absorb and it. And this was even P&G. I mean, they took a big write down on Gillette. Yeah, what, they just what just I totally love about Mondelez is Oreos. The most stuff. Just keep putting more stuff. You know, just it take, seems out, to be working just take out the cookie and just have nothing but stuff. And then but different make kinds of stuff. All those flavors. I realize that the carrot cake Oreo might be one of my favorite Oreos out there. Yeah, and well, it's not traditional. Ellen, I've been given the DQ Oreo Blizzard some business lately. Uh, next up, speaking Delightful. of Brexit, shares of Aston Martin are hitting a new low today. Aston Martin is down nearly 75%, guys, since going public. Last fall, this was after the British car maker posted a $96 million loss for the first half of the year and cut its full year forecast because of falling demand in the UK and the rest of Europe. The CEO says they want to avoid a no deal Brexit because of the disruption he says it would cause at the border, saying, quote, we'll live with it if that's what it is. We saw the pound get hit, Robert, yesterday on this with the Boris Johnson elevation and so forth. Yeah, look, Brit Britain was their top market. Now it's the U.S. So there's definitely a Brexit component. The rest of Europe was soft. That affected them as well. But Aston's in, the, in this tough space where they were going to be the next Ferrari when they went public. Ferrari went public. Ferrari's Their stock is, is nearly tripled. It's incredible. They report tomorrow. But Aston is, is really in a tough spot in a very crowded market. You've got McLaren, you've got Bugatti, you've got Porsche, you've got Lambo, you've got Ferrari. You've got all these companies making $200,000 plus cars. There are a lot of rich people in the world, but not that many. But how are they the odd man out? And, I don't and get so it. right now they're betting on this new SUV, which they'll come out with next year. Yeah. And they're they're pinning all their fortunes on that. But but by the way, everyone, including Lamborghini and Ferrari, have also come out with SUVs. And so that's going to next be the So I don't know that there's enough room at that very top for this many manufacturers making that many cars. Do you remember yeah, when they're... Ford owned all of these things? <laughs> yes, right? I mean, they did. Between they still... Jaguar, yeah, Land Jaguar, Rover, that's the one Aston guess, Martin, yeah. all of these brands they divested of yeah. back yeah. in the day. There must have been a reason why. And you get the inkling between Jaguar, Land Rover, and how they're doing in Aston Martin now. Maybe Ford was okay getting out of those things when they did yeah. back in the day. It's, it's a key point. It's also just worth noting that Aston Martin is a company that's gone bankrupt seven times and for the last five years has been undergoing seven this times. massive and ambitious turnaround plan. So, yes, Brexit's a big part of it. Yes, there's a lot of competition, but the company itself has dealt with a lot of headwinds. In between over the years James as well. Bond movies, it's yes. tough to figure out what's the, probably the only highlight <laughs> for them these days. It should be the major TV. one. <laughs> Skipping right ahead to topic four, the battle between big tech and Washington is heating up with Republican Senator Hawley introducing a bill that he's calling the SMART Act. It stands for Social Media Addiction Reduction Technology. Got that? It would ban social media companies from using things like infinite scrolling, autoplay video, and Snapchat streaks. I, I'm, as a consumer, as a what, user, what's the problem? I'm kind scrolling. of open to the possibility of this because I'll start scrolling on Twitter and then I'm like down in the rabbit but hole. But do we need to but, ban but this? But there is, no. I, and I think 
there will be a lot of question marks, and reportedly no one else has come on to co-sponsor this bill yet. So there's question marks about how far this actually goes. But it gets to this bigger issue, this bigger scrutiny, this bigger need for maybe regulatory oversight of the big tech. The other thing I think is kind of fascinating here is that it's Senator Hawley. He is, he is the youngest senator mm -hmm. in Congress, 39 years old. So he's on the cusp of Gen X and millennial. He is a digital native, right? It's not like an older senator Republican. who's maybe not as tech savvy right. who is taking on big tech but he's been doing it very aggressively for the past year and it's worth taking but on. I wonder if they're having trouble coming up with the right way to take them on and so stuff like this keeps coming up I'm, I'm not look is endless scrolling going to solve social media addiction it's a I'm, headline I'm grabber. a little skeptical this, yeah. this is a headline grabber pure and simple I'm not sure if there's anybody out there who feels as though this is really have a shot in happening really of getting this kind of regulation passed but it certainly does put you at the forefront and it gets you headlines right, right. and people know who you are now <laughs> yes, yes. you might run for president in a couple of years yes. you know like the next cycle or whatever it is but <laughs> it, even if you did it would that actually change uh, you know as the father of a 14 year old I know that even if you ended <laughs> limitless scrolling it wouldn't change a thing they're, they're just, they're on it all day, every day. By the way, everybody who's now pivoted to video as a business model on the, online would like to know if they're going to ban autoplay video rolling, okay? CNBC included, anyway. <laughs> uh, before we go, Huggies and Pampers are betting that parents will spend big on diapers as they roll out higher-end versions of them these days. So Kimberly Clark, which makes Huggies, just rolled out a new line of diapers made from plant-based materials. Pampers' parent company, P&G, we were just talking about them, teaming up with Google for a diaper that tracks when babies sleep and go to the bathroom. Why? Birth rate, 32-year low. Need to make sure they can offset those that stagnation in the business. It also means that those parents, because they are having fewer children, can spend more of that disposable income on them. So it's a bet on it. I don't know if I'd be in that. This is targeting a very specific. This is the Robert Frank market is basically what it comes <laughs> down to. I'm OK going to Costco Golden and diapers. buying Huggies or, or Kirkland <laughs> or, or whatever, because I'm going to use like 10 of them a day. Right. I can't buy the expensive stuff. We're going to go through those things like and crazy. But don't point? you think there would be a market for and, and I'm. I personally would be a little hesitant or skeptical about it just for data collection purposes, but don't you think there's a market for a diaper that could actually track how your kid's doing in the crib? Yeah, but you're getting a notification on your Apple Watch that your kid yeah. just went. I mean, do you, do you really need that all day up? Oh, yep, Sleeping just went. patterns, I mean, that right. could Sleep. be. But maybe if the diaper is a, what do you call, an entry point into the technology. It's an exit point, the, actually. <laughs> or an exit point. Touché, Robert. Touché. I take your point. You know, it's just a, a foothold she tried to to say into data collection about the baby, but then you do get into the, the issues that you raise. The biodegradable stuff I could see. I mean, Prince yeah, Harry himself, right? This idea that he doesn't, 30, have, he doesn't want to have more babies 30, because he's using diapers. 35 cents a diaper. That's what it's costing now. That's a lot. Diapers, that I, I lot. agree, are, seem extremely expensive. If any area other than razors was ripe for some totally. kind of hairy startup disruption, it's got to be this. Totally. How can there not be a cheaper way to make this product? Because I'm with you. I'd buy the cheapest ones on the market. As long as, <laughs> as, long they, as they work. As long as they work, yes. Yeah, I don't even want to talk about the Prince Harry stuff. It's going to be riled up today. Guys, thank you all. <laughs> thank you. Robert Frank, Morgan Brennan, Dom Chu.